In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hello, and a very warm welcome to St. Stephen Walbrook for our choral Eucharist for Passion Week. We just heard Drop, Drop, Slow Tears by Orlando Gibbons. And uh, welcome to those of you joining online. For those of you in the church, do stay for a light lunch if you're able after the service. We turn to the order of service and pray together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. We beseech thee, Almighty God, mercifully to look upon thy people, that by thy great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore, both in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the 43rd chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah beginning at the 16th verse. This is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please have a seat. The depiction of the delightful explosion of scent permeating the whole house in today's gospel always reminds me of visits to the department store of Brown Muff and Co. in the 1970s in Bradford. I generally visited there with uh, mother and grandmother to buy school uniform or have my hair cut, during which apparently I always used to fall asleep. Entering Brown Muff and Co. provided the wonderful contrast between the cold and wet outside and the tidal wave on entry of heat and an intense cocktail of perfumes from the perfumery and makeup department always placed by the door for maximum impact. The perfume that Mary cracks open for anointing the feet of Jesus is much more exotic than anything sold in brown muffs. Pure nard or spikenard was a fragrance oil derived from the nard plant grown in the, the mountains of North India. At 300 denarii, in current terms, it was worth around 20,000 pounds. Pick up a, a pound of Chanel number no. five, always regarded in 1970s uh, Bradford as the most exotic fragrance for around 700 pounds on the internet. Mary's perfume was of a totally different order. Mary acts with great extravagance in expressing her love for Jesus and in symbolically preparing his body for burial, a ritual that will be completed by Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus when they bury the body of the crucified Jesus. Mary was a committed disciple and friend of Jesus and her gratitude and worship were amplified by Jesus' restoring of her brother Lazarus to life. She knew that this miraculous intervention had convinced the authorities that Jesus was a serious threat to their sphere of influence and had to be neutralized. So Mary knows that her time with Jesus is short. She wants to show the depth of her love by creating a display of exquisite beauty and extravagant generosity. The nard may well have represented a large proportion of her wealth. It was perhaps her inheritance. And this act was also a, a shocking contravention of Jewish customs. Jewish women 
always wore their hair up and only let it down for their husbands, or if distracted by grief. Mary's wiping of the feet of Jesus with her hair is a combined gesture of love, service, and grief. The language used points to the similarity with the the wiping of the feet of the disciples by Jesus at the Last Supper. Onlookers would have been staggered by what Mary was doing. Now the reaction of Judas, who should have sold the perfume, given the proceeds to the poor, is on one level perhaps understandable. What a waste could have been used for the poor. But Jesus rejects this attitude and commends this special extravagant sacrament which honors him while he's alive and honors his approaching death. Jesus affirms the actions, the dignity of Mary. He needs displays of genuine love and commitment as the storm clouds gather for him. In this uh, short, wonderful story, we therefore encounter, I think, four types of activity of discipleship and the tensions between them. Firstly, appreciating the beauty of creation through the fabulous nard. Secondly, serving the poor, as Judas brings out. Thirdly, serving family and friends, represented by Mary's sister, Martha, no doubt cursing Mary as Martha toils in the steamy kitchen, trying to provide hospitality, so crucial in Jewish society. And then fourthly, spending time with and generously honoring Jesus. All valid, important activities. The questions are priority and balance, I think. Appreciating the the wonders of creation, serving the poor, serving family and friends are critical activities that flow from and are informed by our relationship with Jesus Christ. But without such a relationship, our activities are perhaps in a vacuum without appreciating the real rationale for such activities or why they are required. To develop this foundational life-giving, life-directing relationship, we need to give of our best, and at times give extravagantly, most crucially, give time, our most precious resource. I believe that uh, our worship should be enhanced and spiced with special gifts, glorious, varied, Music, architecture, art, sculpture, spicy incense from time to time. This helps us to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, as we sang at the wedding blessing on Saturday, or in the words of another hymn, craftsman's art and music's measure, for thy pleasure all combine. For Mary, that unique, special time was when she met Jesus in his final days. For us, we have the the privilege of the rhythms and celebrations of the church's year and its seasons, and special time also created by being in prayer, meditation on scripture, or in silence with Jesus all times when we can give our best and dare to be extravagant. It's definitely a worthwhile investment. We are all here, after all, due to the overflowing love and grace 
of the extravagant God. And nourished and oxygenated by special times and relationship with Jesus, we're called to go out to pursue the imperative within his teaching of serving, especially serving the oppressed, the marginalized, in whose face we see or are called to see the face of Jesus. A balance is a perennial challenge for all of us and we need to keep working on it. Within the church, we need to assess whether we have the balance right between extravagance in honoring Jesus through worship and enabling service. Should we sell this altar, this symbol of sacrifice to provide funds for service? Might be a limited market as to who would buy it. Should we sell some of the uh, 17th century silver given to the church which is locked away and very rarely used to provide funds for service? Should the Vatican sell its collection of sculptures of Greek and Roman gods to the Getty Museum, perhaps, to raise funds for service? What it's worth, my humble opinions, those questions are definitely not, probably yes, and most certainly yes. David the treasurer may have different views. So the rhythms of Passion Tide and Holy Week are perhaps good times for us all to reflect on the questions of the balance in our lives. Are we being appropriately extravagant towards Jesus with our resources, especially our time? Are we giving our best to him? Or are we not cracking open the best bottles for him? Why not ask him to provide guidance? In the name of Jesus, amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We stand to sing the offertory hymn number 84. It is a thing most wonderful, during which we'll take a collection for the work of the church.
Let us pray to God our Father, who gave up his Son out of love for the world. Generous God, you invite us to join you at your table, even though we are not worthy. We come to sit with you there, alongside the ministers of your church and all who confess your name in every tongue known on earth. We pray that those who are prevented from worshipping you and all who are struggling with their faith might be led by the fragrance of your bountiful feast. Help us to pour out the valuable gifts you have given us to honour and glorify you. Transform us by your spirit so that at the sound of your amazing grace might resonate in every fibre of our being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you invite us to join your work on earth. We let your hands guide ours, beckoning all who desire to glimpse your kingdom to sharpen their tools and unroll your blueprint. We pray that your peace may be revealed to all who have authority and influence. We pray for an end to violence, remembering especially the people of Ukraine, Belarus and Russia, and those subject to terror further afield. Empty us of the discord and distrust that prevents relationship building. By your mercy, may we untangle the threads of this complex and broken world and weave together your vision of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you invite us to join you amongst those who are struggling. We see you kneeling at the feet of the homeless, the destitute, and the victims of abuse in this city. We pray for the courage to do likewise. Pour out your wisdom on all those working for the common good, seeking to alleviate inequality and injustice in our communities. Embolden us to stand in the torrent of your love. May the strength of your living water drive us to see this city from the perspective of the one who continually washes the feet of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, you invite us to join you alongside those who are sick. We hear your words of comfort at the bedside of those who are in pain. Help us to echo them. We pray especially for Melvin, John, Ian, Caroline, Francine, Carol, Peter, and for Juliet and her family, Adrian, Jennifer, and their family, Martin, Sam, and Sophia, for Sally, for Tom, for Sarah, Kim, and Mark. Bind our lives together more tightly so that we may cushion one another when we are weak and stumble knowing that we are ever held in your merciful loving kindness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you invite us to join you in your heavenly kingdom. We walk each day alongside those who mourn on the path your Son has set before us. We pray for those close to death, for those who have paid the ultimate price for their discipleship, for Mary and Andrew Hutchings, and for all the recently departed, and for those whose year's mind falls at this time. Together with the whole company of heaven, they fashion our grave clothes. At the last, may we have the humility to receive them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, 
draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose profit is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing.
Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate, in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Well, many thanks uh, to all of you for celebrating with us at St. Stephen Woolbrook today. Uh, do take the leaflet away with you with the events on it. We have uh, jazz tonight at 5.30, which should be um, a real joy. And uh, then next week, Holy Week, uh, we resume uh, start-stop reflections in the church between 7.30 and 9 o'clock on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We have our Monday service, Thursday service here next Thursday, and then a week on Saturday, our principal Easter celebration on Easter Eve on Saturday the 16th with uh, Easter fire, wonderful music, and refreshments afterwards. Do join us uh, at uh, any or all of those if you can. And uh, do have a, a listen to uh, Choral Evensong yesterday uh, on Radio 3, which uh, featured uh, Olivia and some of the uh, choral scholars joining with the Manchester Choral Scholars, uh, a wonderful broadcast, live broadcast of Choral Evensong from Manchester. Listen to it on Catch Up. And do have a, a safe and blessed week ahead. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be with you and all those whom you love today and forever. Amen.